Marion Pötz, thank you very much for taking the time for giving me an interview. What does responsibility mean to you in the context of innovation? The way I understand the concept of responsible innovation is that it relates to designing innovation processes in such a way that they create uh, new products, services, business models or processes that are both ethically acceptable but that also take into account social requirements and environmental requirements in such a way that innovation activities, both in the process itself, but also in its outcome, have a positive impact on the way we live, so the society in general, uh, and also, of course, the environment. What challenges and opportunities arise from responsible innovation for innovators, for innovation managers, and for organizations? Responsible innovation enables innovating organizations, including companies, um, to direct their innovation activities towards something that is actually relevant for society. Uh, and that is not just for the sake of being responsible, but creating innovation, new products, new services, new business models that actually solve societal problems is also a source of competitiveness and innovation success in that sense. The concept of responsible innovation, in my understanding, very much requires collective action in a sense, so integrating the views, the knowledge, the needs of those who benefit from research innovation uh, into innovation processes requires, of course, abilities of external search, of external collaboration, and building the absorptive capacities towards being able to integrating diverse external knowledge, collaborating with diverse partners and putting all that knowledge to use, either for-profit or non-for-profit. And that is, of course, not an easy thing to do. How can societal needs be articulated towards companies mm -hmm. and why doesn't this work at the moment? One way, of course, of um, addressing societal needs is instead of either having a full technology push approach or doing some market research is to install mechanisms that enable those who eventually benefit from innovation activities to co-create these innovation activities in some form or the other. In early stages of innovation processes, of course, will change the direction of these innovation activities and eventually provide us with an opportunity to create something that is more useful for society. Responsible innovation also means to engage with society, to engage with citizens. What challenges and opportunities arise for, for them? From a citizen point of view, responsible innovation processes um, enable them to be empowered in some form. So they, there is an invitation, a possibility to co-design the starting points uh, and direct innovation activities or research and innovation activities towards something that they eventually benefit from. Um, that is, of course, a huge opportunity, but that also comes with some sort of obligations, like with companies uh, or other innovating organizations, also citizens need to have both the resources and individual level absorptive capacities to be able to engage in these collaborative or co-creation processes. That, for example, relates to having a certain level of scientific literacy in order to be able to engage with scientists and with innovating organizations. The concept of responsible research innovation has been developed in the public sphere, mainly mm -hmm. driven by the European Commission mm -hmm. and applied to research organizations. Mm -hmm. Now, at the moment, it's also translated for companies to be applied mm -hmm. in the context of responsible innovation. Mm -hmm. Do you see this need to translate it? Does it have different characteristics when we want to link up responsible innovation to corporate social responsibility, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. for the business context? I think that more and more businesses are actually trying to direct their innovation activities towards socially relevant innovation or innovation that solves societal challenges, particularly in the 21st century, that given that challenges are more complex and that one company alone is hardly able to solve or address any of these challenges. So collaborative efforts are required to do that. 
Is there a business case for responsible innovation that can show companies that engaging in responsible innovation mm -hmm. pays off? I have an interesting case that generates both research and innovation in a, in a responsible way, and that is uh, the Ludwig Boltzmann Gesellschaft's first crowdsourcing project for generating research questions in the field of mental health. We all know mental health issues are an important and increasing issue with respect to human health. Um, and in this process, patients and their caretakers were able to define the starting points of research and innovation activities. Um, and these starting points transitioned into something actionable, actionable at the moment two Ludwig Boltzmann Gesellschaft research groups are working on the outcome of that process. So two research groups, highly interdisciplinary research groups, work on research and innovation based on what the crowd of patients uh, and their caretakers have defined. For example, the issue of the relationship between parents' mental health issues and their children's development. One of them, the village research group, Uh, develops and actually implements, so there is an innovation element to that too. Um, new practice for collaborative care of children with mentally ill parents. How did you organize this crowdsourcing exercise? We used an online platform um, to access uh, widely distributed knowledge about mental health issues among patients, their caretakers from all around the world. So via this online platform, uh, patients were able to suggest what they think mental health research and innovation should work on. So basically, uh, the research is delegated Uh, the definition of the most important stage of a research process entirely to the crowd. Yeah? And then the next phases of the process were co-creation phases, where researchers and patients then work together in the development or in the processing of the first stage. The online context in that particular uh, case was very important because mental health issues are still stigmatized and the online environment provided enough anonymity How did you create sufficient trust that people shared this quite sensitive mm -hmm. information? We created a network of partners, of trustworthy partners, of advocacy groups and others who were informed about these activities, who were able to co-create the way we were setting up these activities, and then who were also able to communicate about that to their community members, creating trust and making sure that people felt safe when they, when they worked with us. And we also committed ourselves to process the outcome. I think, I think that's important and creates trust as well, not just what many currently called harnessing the wisdom of the crowd. Uh, so not harnessing, but actually using that kind of knowledge and bringing it, putting it to use, bringing it to ends that uh, patients eventually can benefit from. What were the specific design elements of this crowdsourcing process that you took care of in order to involve people mm -hmm. with mental health issues? Mm -hmm. One important aspect was the online environment, making sure that you could anonymously uh, suggest what basic research um, should work on and what innovation activities should pick up later on. Uh, that was one design element. Then, of course, we had lots of discussions with respect to what could incentivize this specific type of crowd to engage with us. Um, usually crowdsourcing process have a winner-takes-it-all model that was totally irrelevant in this case, of course. So for us, it was most important that as many as possible um, felt that this is a trusted environment where they can actually make an impact. And That of all these aspects um, were important in the way we campaigned for this project. So the campaigning was a crucial aspect. The way we talked to uh, individual patients, to patient representatives, to advocacy groups, to doctors, to employers, uh, to caretakers, in order to inform about this project. So I think that was crucial in this project to design the campaigning activities in a way Uh, to create trust and to make people understand that this is not just some one out of many crowdsourcing activity, but something that aims at generating impact. What are the success factors that are key for running such kind of uh, 
open innovation, open science processes. Mm -hmm. One key message here is there is no one size fits all. So in that sense, the underlying process of defining the starting points for research and innovation projects, so breaking down the big missions into actionable starting points, I think this underlying process works in many different areas. However, the exact design and the design questions you were asking, uh, the, the answer to these questions um, might be different in different contexts. Are there any pitfalls or no-goes where you would say, don't do that, mm -hmm. it just risks the success of mm -hmm. the whole process? I think it's important to understand that expertise, innovation relevant expertise is widely distributed. And it may not be that uh, patients know everything about scientific research, but patients have uh, expert expertise by experience. So experiential knowledge that particularly in the medical sciences or in health related innovation process is equally important. Uh, than technological knowledge. So I think it's important to uh, engage in these kinds of processes with uh, mutual respect, understanding that different actors in the system have different bits and pieces of knowledge and by recombining that knowledge we can create impact. What are the main challenges about assessing future impacts? Uh, we are currently working on a really interesting project where we are trying to use artificial intelligence to find alternative ways of identifying whether scientific research informs practices. So what we're currently doing is we're comparing scientific papers, and we did that for the first time in the field of diabetes research, and trying to find out whether these research activities are reflected in hospital guidelines. So if we have developed a particular artificial intelligence that is able to compare documents on meaning, and very interestingly, we found uh, several scientific projects being part of these hospital guidelines, but not cited. Yeah? So I think what we need, and this is only one out of many ways of addressing this uh, request, we need new forms of impact measurement for open and collaborative production of science and innovation. What recommendations do you have for innovation managers if they would like to design their innovation processes more open, more responsible and more sustainable? I think the first step towards designing processes in that way is to understand that innovation relevant knowledge is widely distributed within and outside their boundaries. And it's very often even located outside their usual search radar. Another prerequisite is to understand that there is no one size fits all. So subject to the innovation challenges we are facing, we will design innovation processes, open and collaborative innovation processes in different ways. And the other thing um, that is important for innovation managers or anyone in the company who wants to pursue or push or increase their innovation capabilities is you may be able to do one or the other project that is successful. But if organizations want to integrate working with open and collaborative practices into their DNA, they also need to change something on the ecosystem level. That includes having a strategy that supports open and collaborative working, having leadership practices, and I'm not saying leaders, but leadership practices, because in open innovation systems, in a sense, leadership is a distributed activity. Having leadership practices that translate this strategy into action, and that means having ecosystem designs or organizational designs that enable open and collaborative knowledge flows. In my experience, and I'm currently working with a number of companies who actually put sustainability uh, as a starting point of their innovation activities. So I think it's important to not talk about responsibility as something that is only doing good, but I think there is no discrepancy. It's, there is no trade-off between doing good and doing successful, also commercially successful. Thank you very much for this interesting interview. Thank you for inviting me.